Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech, and this week I'm showing you one of the best extensions for Notion for easy capture like this. Capture sites using forms. Adding tags straight from the extension. Selecting highlights and adding them to the captured Notion page and capture ideas straight from your start bar. If you're anything like me, you'll have multiple databases inside Notion where you quickly want to add information to. I'm thinking, for example, the inbox, a to watch or to read list, uh, things like a wish list or even idea captures where I just want to put things on a list and quickly keep going with whatever I was doing after the ID sprung. To do so, I use an extension called Save to Notion. This extension under Active Development by Anis Gad is a really sweet way of building forms that allow you to quickly add specific types of information to your databases. And I've been using it almost daily since finding out about its existence. Since I love the extension so much, I thought I'd build a video to show you how I use it and how you can use it to improve your workflow capturing things in Notion. To use the extension, we first need to install it. I will put a link in the description and you will need to use Chrome or Edge for this. Once it's installed, you will see a new icon. Let's create a quick inbox example. I'll go to Notion and add a full page table. Name it inbox and modify it so there's a URL field. I'll remove the files as unfortunately this property type isn't supported by the extension yet. Now we need to set up our first form. Click the extension and hit the create a form button. We get a lot of options so let me talk about them quickly. Template allows you to pick a Notion template for this form. Our inbox example doesn't have a template but you can see this in action during my book example later in this video. Then there's the save page content option. This gives you the option if you want to scrape the website and add all information to Notion or that the fields provided here are enough. I usually leave it off because I prefer to pick only the highlights that I find interesting but to show you what happens I'm going to switch it on in this example. We then get to the actual fields. Save to Notion provides a few sane defaults, getting things like the website icon, the main image on the page, the URL and the page title. There's a lock behind it that allows you to decide if you want to be able to modify this field before adding or not. If there isn't a lock like with images, then changing this field is impossible as you can't type an image, for example. Let's go with the defaults and see what we get. Click save. Now we pick a website. In this example, I'm going to add the Notion website to Notion for that nice meta feel. Click on the extension and you will notice a few things. Because we have only one form, the extension will pick this form straight away. We can click the back button to get to the list and add another form if we want to. In the form, you will see the image, title and URL it's about to save. Because all fields are locked, we don't get an added window and we can just click save. Click that and when we open it in Notion, we see the end result. A lot of captured data straight into the database. Great, but we would like more control. So let's go to the extension and modify the form a bit. Click on the extension, pick the inbox form and click on the gear on the top right. We now get the form editor again and let's make a few changes. First of all, I'm no longer going to save the page content and I'll remove the lock on the title so I can make changes there. Finally, we will add a property field and pick the tags property. Click save and let's try adding to the Notion homepage once again. When we now open the extension, you will notice that there are fields to fill. Name has the title field, for example, and we can modify it as needed. Right below, we can also pick tags and if you don't have a tag yet, you can add them right in the extension. It's very similar to how that works in Notion. Once we added a bit of data, click save to Notion and let's look at the result. As you can see, we get less data now, but we do get the image that was captured. We also see that tags are filled. Excellent. Let's have a look at something more useful, adding movies to a movie database. Being able to capture websites is nice, but let's add another example and be more specific on what we want to capture. I made a small gallery to collect information on movies. It has things like rating, director and status. 
I'm using status to keep track of what movies I want to watch and what movies I already watched. To get my movie information, I usually go to letterbox.com, but this will work fine on any other movie site as well. I personally tested EMDB and Rotten Tomato while researching this topic, and that's also why you see Tenet three times in my database. Not only does Save to Notion allow me to fill in most fields, it will also try and capture the main image of the site. In the case of Letterboxd, this will be a movie poster that will get assigned as the cover image, so I get a nice overview in the gallery. It will also capture the site FAF icon and place that as the page icon. You can change the behavior of this to suit your needs. For this example, the defaults will do fine. Now I will capture the movie Tenant on Letterboxd so we have an example to work with and we will not capture the content of the page. I'm going to use a feature called Highlight that allows me to select text and add that to the Notion page I just captured. Right after capturing a page, scroll through it, select the text you find interesting and right click to select Add Highlight from the menu. You can do this multiple times on the same page and it is a quick way to build a reference table of the things you want to remember without having to search for information on a later time. We had a quick look at adding to a simple inbox and using highlights when capturing movies. Let's try something more complex with relations between tables. For this, I'm going to use a pre-built template from Roxana, a fellow Notion user. I will link to her template in the description. This is her library template and it's not only holding books, but also things like authors and categories. I'm starting with duplicating the template to my own workspace and then I'll remove the books and authors so I can fill it with fresh data. Now let's create a new form to quickly add books to this database. We go to the extension and pick a new form. Then we pick books from our fresh template. The form should be easy enough to follow. We are making a few choices like using the new book template and not cluttering our database with page content. Remember, we can always use the highlight function to quickly add notes. I'm going to unlock the page title so we can clean it up when adding and add a few detail fields from the template like book format and language, giving them defaults that apply to me, but they might be different for you. Finally, I'm adding author and category, and as you can see, those are entries that are related fields. Click save and the prep work is done. Let's see how it works in practice. I'm going to add books by searching for them on Goodreads. And as an example, I'm picking Getting Things Done by David Allen. It's getting a bit outdated, but it was a game changer for me when I read it over a decade ago. The defaults are already set and I'm going to focus on the author and category set. Now, when clicking category, I can type self to find self-development, so that's easy enough. But David isn't in my list of authors yet. Luckily, I can make this page straight from the extension. Once added, I'll open the page in Notion to see what we have captured. The fields I specified are there and author is linked to an empty page that I can fill in later. I'm only hitting one small problem and that is that this template uses a file property for cover. But a quick copy and paste will resolve that for now. I'm sure it's something that will get fixed in a future version. Do keep it in mind when writing personal templates. Big thanks to Roxana for letting me use her template in this quick demo. Sometimes I want to capture ideas when I'm not in a browser. Luckily, the developer added a trick to use the extension as a quick capture form. For this, we need a special URL that I will put in the description. It opens the extension in a browser window. Now, normally this won't work because the extension will try and capture the website and it will just freeze hanging to get information, resulting in a screen like this. There are two secret switches that you can use to work around that. The first one is standalone and that tells the extension to not do this and just use empty values. This will allow you to pick a form, fill in your own details and save it. If you even want to eliminate picking a form like me, then you can add the form name switch and set it to the name of a specific form. I use this in combination with adding it to my taskbar, a trick that I explained in one of my two minute tip videos to open a form 
get something out of my head and keep working, knowing that it will pop up the next day when I'm going through my day start, allowing me to just work distraction free. Thanks for watching this YouTube video. I hope it was helpful. If there's any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments down below. If there's any topic you guys find interesting, then also let me know in the topics down below. I always look at it and at least add it to my idea list to see if I can use it or incorporate it in one of my other videos. That's it for this week. This is Tools on Tech. I talk about using tech to be more productive and mostly focusing on Notion. Remember, you're awesome. Keep it up and see you in two weeks.